everyone, welcome to the Books Are Us show where we have lived out our story, written our story to tell our story. This show is all about interviewing authors and their process. And by you watching this show, it will help you find your story within. Okay. Today, um, I have the privilege and honor to interview Mandy Frederick. I'm so happy that she's here with us today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. All right, all right. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. My name is Mandy Fresh Frederick. I am the CEO and founder of Discover the Beauty Woman Empowerment. And basically what we do is help women in the community pursue their purpose with passion. I'm also a hairstylist, makeup artist. I flow my business through the name of painting the world pretty with your girl Mandy. And also hair designs by Mandy Fresh Frederick. Not only that, I'm also an author of the best-selling book called God's Beauty Queen. It's a 21-day beauty empowerment. And what we basically do is empower the women to pursue their purpose with passion. It goes into details about what beauty truly is and what it isn't. So, yeah, that's basically a nutshell of what I do. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Can you define beauty? Sure. Um, beauty, well, to me, the way God gave me the nugget of what beauty truly is, beauty starts within the soul. Mm -hmm. Beauty is not something that you can just put on with the pretty hair, the lipstick, the, the lip gloss, the lashes, although I love adorning myself in that, but beauty starts within your soul. It starts within your emotion, the very makeup of who you are on the inside. That is what beauty is. It's your intellect. It's how you interact with other people. It's how you live your life. It's how you display your character. That's what beauty is. How you allow, how do people, how do you entreat other people? How do people feel when they're around you? That's the very essence of what beauty is because yeah. it starts within the soul. It's not just something you can put on or you can masquerade on, but it is, is this who you are as a person that what beauty is really is. That is so beautiful. And you're a beautiful person. Oh, thank you, girl. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what influenced you to write this book? Well, in the past, I used to deal with a lot of low self-esteem. I didn't know who I was. I didn't like the color of my skin. I didn't like, you know, basically the DNA of who God created me to be. So um, what inspired me to write that book was I had to go through a long journey with God. And God took me through a journey of learning who Mandy is, um, falling in love with who Mandy is. Because I'm not going to lie. Um, I have cricket toes, praise God. My toes go from east and west. They go this way. And um, I didn't like the way my feet was. Basically, God had to take me through a process of falling in love with who Mandy is, who he created me to be. Because the thing about it is in order to display beauty, you got to know who you are on the inside. And people got to be able to feel that. It's, it's a connection that you connect with other people and how you make them feel. That's what beauty is. So I had to go through a journey of rediscovering who I am in God and reestablishing my identity in God and re reaffirming who I was in him. Because, you know, when you get to a place and you know that it's in him that you move and breathe and have your being, that's what beauty is. Beauty is not tied to a person. It's not tied to a place. It's not tied to material things. But it is who you are on the inside and how you make people feel when they come around you. The, the fruit and the very essence of what you give when people come into your presence. That is what beauty is. Yes, yes. I love how you said that. That was beautifully said. Wow, wow, wow. Now, on day one, you talk about influence, how people can influence you in a positive way and in a negative way. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware of your surroundings. Could you elaborate more on that? Well... You know, there's a famous saying that they said, a bird of a fe feather flock together. You know, if, I, if you show me at least five of your friends, I can tell you who you are based on by the people you hang around, based on by the people you associate yourself with. So um, if you're somebody who's inspiring to be a millionaire, you're not going to hang around a lot of broke people because yes. you're... You're in a, they say you're an average of who you hang around. So you are what you surround yourself with. So... If you're trying to get to a mode where you want to be more positive, you surround yourself with positive people. If you're trying to reset your mindset on a, a right track to where, okay, you have goals and you have aspirations, you're not going to hang around people who are dream killers and dream stealers. You're going to hang around people who inspire you. You're going to hang around people who are doing what you want to do or is already there and you inspire to be where they are you're going to surround yourself with where you're trying to go so if you show me 
The five people you hang around, I can tell you exactly where you're going to go within the next couple of years based on who you surround yourself with. Okay, so tell me, if you're a person that wants to, like you said, change your mindset and change your surroundings, like how do you gather those friends or how do you come to someone and you know try to befriend them so that you can be more like that, those type of people? I, I believe, you know, you attract who you are. Mm -hmm. I believe there's some inner work that must take place within you to attract what you're looking for. Um, because nine, nine out of 10, these people who are in the hierarchy position, they're not going to want to be around negative people. They don't surround themselves around negative people. So if you're trying to attract them, then you got to first shift in your mind. You got to first change your disposition to attract them. Now I'm not speaking from a place as if I arrived because there's still certain things in me that I'm working on being complete. And there's still some things in me that God is perfecting. So in order to get to that next place, there's certain things on the inside of whether it's your attitude, your mindset, how you think, or, you know, how your perspective on life and your perspective on how you see other people, it all lines up. So if you're trying to attract people in high places, I'm not saying you got to be in high places, but what I'm saying is there's an inner work that must take place first. And once you get yourself to that position where that inner work is taking place and transformation is taking place, then God begins to position people around you because there's a desire and a pull to shift and change. So because that desire is there, God will begin to bring people around you to get you to that <laughs> because you're doing your due diligence, the necessary steps to get there. So God is, you know, he, girl, I feel like I'm preaching. But yeah, preaching. you are. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> doing something for me too as well so I, I love what you're saying now let's go on day three I'm gonna skip around because I don't want you know I, I want other people to read her book so mm -hmm. okay so on day three define adversary because I noticed you talked about um adversary what is adversity? adversity yeah adversity I'm sorry what is adversity to you um adversity can be anything that comes up as an opposition whether it's lack of employment, lack of finances, your sickness, um, you know, sickness in the body, mm -hmm. it can be any of those symptoms. Like, let me give you a scenario. Um, this year, before my conference is August, um, abruptly adversity hit me. I had to have emergency surgery. I had to get my gallbladder removed because my system was failing. I mean, just that fast, mm -hmm. I was fine, and all of a sudden, it's, I caught jaundice, and my eyes turned yellow. That was adversity. Yeah. And but me, knowing who I am in God, I had to believe that God was going to work it out. Yeah. So adversity come to test you. It, adversity comes to weigh who you are on the inside. If you're going to let adversity move you as a person, you know, then we begin to see who you really are, yeah. where your faith is really, where you're really planted. So that adversity came to test at a critical moment. Mind you, I had a conference coming up. So I had to believe God was going to change my situation, that he was going to turn it around. And he turned it around. Yeah. When I came out of it, nobody knew I had surgery. But because I believed God, I didn't look like what I went through. I didn't look like what God took me out of. See, adversity come to try your faith. Adversity come to test your innermost being. But if your foundation is fully in God, no matter what you're going through, adversity can't shake you. Because why? Like I ever said in the beginning, I always revert to, to that. It's in God we move and be. It's in God we live. It's in God we move. And it's in God we have our being. And if these three components are in place, no matter what adversity come your way, you're not going to be shaken because you know who you are in God. You understand that God is your fortified place. You understand that God is your place of refuge. So no matter what adversity come your way, you're not going to be shaken because you're strong, sure footed in who God is and who he is in you. And it goes back to that place of beauty. Again, beauty is not just how you look. Beauty is, uh, and beauty is the very essence of the spirit of God on the inside of you. And when people can begin to feel that unction and people can feel that pull of God in you. Yes. It's beautiful. Yes. It's, 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 girl, look. No, I love it. it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's something to be amazed about when you can walk into the room and you can change the atmosphere by your very presence. You don't even have to open up your mouth. It's just something about you that you carry. And they're trying to figure out what it is about Nadesha, what it is about Mandy that I'm trying to understand. That is beauty in a nutshell. You can't explain it. You can't describe it. But it is something that people feel when they come in your presence. Yeah. That's what beauty is. Yeah.
Ooh, Jesus. Yes, and I also want to talk about adversity in a practical sense. Like mm -hmm. when someone um, is going through some kind of situation or a problem, mm -hmm. you have to learn to train your mind to seek the solution in that problem instead of always, you know, panicking. Because a lot of, the first instinct people want to do is just panic or mm -hmm. have some kind of sense of anxiety. You have to get to a place where you just go ahead and train your mind. Okay, what's the solution to this problem? Mm -hmm. So I can know, you know, how to handle it. Mm -hmm. So in your, in the practical sense, how would you handle it once you do go through some kind of problem in a practical sense? Well, first I have to reside in myself knowing that it's going to be okay. Yeah. Because, and I keep reverting back, when you know who you are, because things are going to happen. Yeah. Life is going to happen. But you got to be sure that your foundation is founded on a ground that is solid. Yeah. It can't be founded on a quicksand or something. People, places, and things will fail you. Yeah. People change. Yeah, people do change. Scenarios change. Mm -hmm. But God never changed. God never changed. If your foundation is in God, mm -hmm. no matter what may buck up against you, it's a done deal that you're victorious. Yeah. It's a done deal. It's already written that you're victorious. So yeah. Exactly. You you take on that mindset, that victorious mindset. I'm not saying trials are not going to come. I'm not saying that you're not going to be tested. Yeah. But here's the beauty in the test. Yeah. Your foundation is in God and you understand that God is going to make a way. Mm -hmm. No matter how it looks like, no matter how things may come to buck up against you, you understand that your God is for you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So no matter what you face, you have already got the victory. It's already a done deal. Yeah. It's already, it's a fixed fight. Yes, 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 yes. I love that you said that. Now, I know your book is an empowerment book. Now, what do you, uh, what do you want women to get from your book as they're reading it? What I want women to get from my book is the very essence of what God intended beauty to be. Mm -hmm. um, because society has failed us tremendously. They say beauty is a size zero. or Beauty is the lighter you are, that's the most beautiful you are. Or the smaller you are, that's beauty. But beauty is the very essence of a person's spirit, their soul. That's what beauty is. Beauty is who you are on the inside. Beauty is being able to tap into that place or tap into that thing that God has called you to do and you're walking, you're walking it out unapologetically. That is what beauty is. Beauty is impacting the next person's life with your testimony. Beauty is impacting the next person's life with your business, your ministry, whatever it is that your passion is and you're doing it and people are being impacted by it. that is what beauty is it's not about the color of our skin because you know th there's a notion that is painted if you're light you're beautiful if you have straight hair you're beautiful if you have wavy hair you're beautiful no 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 it's attractive but that is not what beauty is see the word of God talks about that God give us beauty for ashes when we understand that we understand that when a person come out of adversity when a person come out of a trial and a tribulation and they overcome it you know you don't look at what you came from and that is the very essence of what beauty is. People can't see what you've been through but they see the glory of God. They see the very um finishing work of God that when he has brought you out people can begin eating. People can eat from the tree yes. of adversity because you produce out of adversity. You become the very thing that God called you to be which is resilient. You build tenacity. You build boldness. You're not afraid. Mm -hmm. That is what beauty is. Yes. I hope this is blessing somebody because no. it's blessing me. Listen, it's blessing me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bless anybody else. It's blessing me. Okay, it doesn't matter. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay, is there anything in your book that you dealt with and you overcame? I had to deal with falling in love with who Mandy is. Mm -hmm. I had to fall in love with my cricket toes. Mm -hmm. I had to fall in love with my skin that I am. I had to fall in love with my very shape. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> and I'm going to be transparent. Um, I had to fall in love with a lot of things because, you no, know, depending on your culture, background, some people say the darker you are, you're not that attractive. So I can only speak from my experience. You know, in the past when I was younger, you know, there was a guy, you know, that I was attractive to and I was not light enough. I wasn't small enough. I wasn't pretty enough for him so to me that is what planted the seed of not liking who I was mm. that's what planted the seed of 
not being excited about what God created because of what somebody else said. Yeah. And a lot of people deal with self identity based on a seed that was planted and they don't realize that the seed became a tree. And they're trying to figure out why am I struggling with identity issues or why am I struggling with who I am? It's because there's a seed that you're, you're probably not aware of that has been planted from a childhood. Now it became this big tree and you're trying to figure out why am I battling with self identity? Why am I battling with the skin that I am? Can I submit to you that it is something that was planted into you when you were a child or from somebody that you may have admired or that you may have looked up to and they said something something and it wounded you to the soul but I am here to tell you that God is a healer he's a restorer no matter what people may have told you and say that you're not good enough you're not beautiful enough I came to tell you that you're beautiful that you're great that you're fearfully and wonderfully made by God that every fiber of your being that God has a use for no matter what people have said contrary to you God has use of you he has use of your skin color he has use of the very fiber of your hair no matter what background that you came from God has use of you don't believe the lies of the enemy telling you that you're not good enough that you don't qualify to walk in the offices of the CEOs or, or the fortune 500 companies or you don't measure up to the standard that people may have said that you're supposed to measure up to I came to tell you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and you are perfect in the master's eye you're beautiful in the master's eye you're created with everything that you need in the master's eye everything Everything that you need is already on the inside of you. Nothing missing, nothing broken, and nothing lacking. The finished work of the cross was already completed. So I want you to be encouraged and know that God has a purpose for your life. He has called you to do great and mighty exploits. Don't believe the lies of the devil saying that you're not good enough. You're not great enough. You don't have what it takes. I came to tell you, you have what it takes and more because God has created you and everything that you need is already on the inside of you to do the finished work. Yes, Lord. Girl, <laughs> let him have his way. Let him have his way. Lord, Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Oh Praise the Lord. God. And I was just listening to you about um, learning to um, love yourself. Um, I, would you say the beginning step of learning to love yourself would be accepting who you are, or mm -hmm. who God made you to be? Like, and how would you teach someone how to learn to love themselves? Like, what's the beginning step? Well, we know the beginning step that God is love. Yeah, that's that's the first thing. God is love. Um, once we understand that God is love, we understand that God loves us unconditionally mm -hmm. and we tap into the love of God. Then we can love ourselves yeah. unconditionally with our flaws and our shortcomings. And when you can begin to do that, then you can begin to love your neighbor and you love yourself. Yes. How can you display love to one to another, but yet you don't love yourself? And the reason why a lot of people can't love other people is because they don't love themselves. Self. And the reason why they don't love themselves, they don't understand who God is because yeah. God is love. He's an unconditional father. He's a good father that loves you with your flaws and all. And you can adjust that and accept the love of the father and accept who you are with your flaws and all. Then you can begin to accept other people with their flaws and all. You won't put people in a position where you know you have not walked into. You'll have a little bit more grace on other people. You'll have a little bit more mercy on other people you'll have a little bit more compassion on other people because you understand it is the love of the father that works on the inside of you that empowers you to love other people with their flaws and their shortcoming and with whatever that they come with you love them unconditionally so in order to do that we must first understand the love of the father yes that's right Amen. 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 Oh, I'm loving this. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I am loving this. Okay, now from, okay, let's see. Um, how would you encourage the young authors out there that are writing their books? Like, how would you encourage them through the process? I would encourage you be yourself. Um, whatever, whatever that inspiration is, because all of us have a story to tell. Yes. Whether my platform is in beauty because I dealt with low self-esteem, I dealt with identity issues. That is the arena that God called me to reign in. Uh, um, it's like God will call you in an arena that you're most weak in because guess what? It's in those places that God showed himself strong in you. Yes. So everybody has a story to tell. Whatever your story is, 
There is somebody out there waiting for you to release that book. There is somebody out there that's waiting for you to tell your story so that they can come out yeah. of their situation. Yeah. Because there's no such thing as wasted adversity. Yeah. No matter what you go through, it's a pain at the end. Whether it's through your storytelling, whatever platform that God allows you to walk onto, that is your place to tell your story. So for all the authors that are coming out, who are inspired, who want to write a book, mm -hmm. tell your story. Be unapologetically about it yes. and just go with what you know. Yes. Be, go with what you know. Yes. Yes. And hire a ghostwriter. <laughs> <laughs> and hire a ghostwriter. Praise the Lord. <laughs> all right. So if we wanted to purchase a book, how do we go about that? Um, if you want to purchase my book, you can go to www.mandyfreshfrederick.com or you can email me at mandy3cg at gmail.com or you can, uh, you can Instagram me, mandyfresh underscore Frederick on Instagram and just shoot me a text, a DM, and then order your book and it'll be shipped to you. Amazon as well. Yes, yeah, on Amazon as well. You can order on Amazon. Yes, 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 yes. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Um, Mandy, I just want to thank you for taking the opportunity to do this interview with me. It's mm -hmm. very empowering. I, I'm telling you, I encourage you to read her book. <laughs> Even if you're fasting, this 21 day empowerment book will help you through the process of fasting as well. If, you, if you're trying to overcome certain areas in your life, especially when it comes to building confidence or whatever it may be, or, or learning how to change your mindset mm -hmm. and stuff like that go and read her book it will help you through that process yes it will okay um yes this is the book Sarah show i'm your host Nadesh Bastian thank you have a good night <laughs>